Hello everybody, this is Boaz Feiler and I'm here with a special report. For the next couple of days we are going to talk about themes that are starting from the 9th of November up to the 18th of November. And I'm going to give you a detailed forecast for the next couple of days. I guess that we all know what happened in the elections in the United States. We're all aware of the results and we're waking up to a brave new world in which the unpredictable and the unimagined for some people has happened. Some people are very happy about it, some people are very sad, but there's a lesson here for us all. I've heard so many astrologers in recent time predict the result of these elections. And most of them predicted that Hillary will win, or at least were leaning towards a victory by Hillary Clinton. And I think the lesson here is, first of all, to understand that astrology can never predict what would happen exactly in the future. The future is an ocean with many currents. It's a river with multiple possibilities affected, most of all, by what we do, by our free will. This is how we shape things around us. Yes, it's a mixture of our free will and the surrounding environment and conditions. And as astrologers, we could predict those conditions. We could predict those surroundings, both on an elections uh, process or for our clients on a personal chart. But we can never know what the, exactly the result will be. And this is a crucial point because once an astrologer believes that he could exactly predict an outcome, whether it is for a client or for a general process, he is stepping out of his boundary and he's actually betraying his role as an agent of change and enlightenment. He is actually stepping out of the ethical boundaries and the moral boundaries and the professional boundaries that he has laid upon himself or herself. And we need to remember that. We are talking about symbolic languages. We are talking about reflective images of the macrocosm within the microcosm of our own being, of our own environment, of our own universe. And believing that we could have the gift of prophecy and knowing exactly what the outcome of things would be is either very vain, very stupid, or plain out fraud. So, back to where we are today. Today, the moon is going to conjunct Neptune. And that Neptunic theme is going to follow us as on the 18th, I believe, of the month, Neptune is going to step out of its retrograde on the south node of the moon and conjunct, conjunct the south node of the moon and start striding forwards. And what it is all about, when the moon is conjunct Neptune, we feel like we've been encompassed in a womb. We feel like a sort of haze or of, of, of fog has descended on our universe. And we go inside, metaphorically and for real. We, we, we go inside and we become more introverted. And the realms of imagination, the realms of thoughts and feelings of everything happening within us become much more important than the outside world. And we go into a state that I want to parallel to being pregnant. Because this is a state of emotional digestion. And that emotional digestion is a, is a slow process. And much like a pregnancy, we cannot hurry it. If we want 
that brainchild of ours, that understanding, that knowledge, that answer, to truly be able to breathe in the world and walk on its own, we cannot hurry the process. We cannot hasten that pregnancy. It will have to be delivered when the time is right. So today we could feel like astronauts and of course this is a great time for anything spiritual or artistic or just becoming introverted and going inside. Meditating is an amazing option for today. And what is this process that we've been going through of understanding and of acknowledging? Well, it has a lot to do with the coming full moon in Taurus on the 14th. We're going to have a full moon and an energetic build-up all through the weekend from Thursday onwards. An energetic build-up to that full moon and that energetic build-up can actually be very pleasant, can be very nice. And it's about reconnecting to our bodies and to our senses and the understanding that we live in a physical plane, in a physical world, within a physical body. So it's all about enjoying aesthetics with our eyes and hearing beautiful stuff with our ears, tasting good food and good drinks with our palate and enjoying the sense of touch. It's about reconnecting to this earth. It's about acknowledging the boundaries, our own boundaries, our own bodies, understanding that we have the resources and we have the gifts and we have the talent and we have the cognitive ability to make sure that our future stays intact to take care of whatever needs to be taken care of. And that those resources, and in fact, the planet itself, is limited. And it's about owning up to personal responsibility. And we see here an acknowledgement that is coming forth regarding the understanding that we cannot, cannot continue to be a player once every four years or once every couple of years with a, um, a vote and then com complain for the next four years or so or two years or three years, whatever it is, regarding the people that we've sent to take the responsibility for us. It's about moving away from representative democracy into the understanding that we all have the responsibility and the tools to take care of our own future. We have the technology, we have the moral background, backbone, I'm sorry, and the cognitive ability. And it's about us understanding that if we want to make our life better, if we want to enjoy this life, we need to take responsibility for it. And we cannot blame others whom we sent any longer. So if I'm going back to today, we're going to have the moon conjunct Neptune, which we talked about. And then later on, that's noontime in the States and onwards. It's evening time, late evening time in Europe and onwards. We're going to have a sextile to Pluto and a square to Saturn. And that's Sextile to Pluto is about inner strength, finding your, finding your inner strength, and the square to Saturn could present some problems and frictions within work environments. Today, Mars, the planet of action, and the planet that is connected to anything masculine, the planet of defense and war, the, planets of the, the planet of desires, is walking into Aquarius. And we all become much more rebellious and much less patient in this time. It's about us understanding that we need to act for the greater good, for the humanitarian cause, for the group. That it's not about ourselves alone. 
that it's about us as a community, that we are interconnected, that if we don't stand together, we'll fall one at a time. It's about bundling up. It's about concentrating our efforts to make a collective change. And that's very positive because it quickens, it quickens the process of change. On the negative side, we could be less patient than usual with other people in our life. We could not have the patience to wait for the wills of justice to, do their, to go on their course or for the system to change and become rebellious in a way that will harm more than it would do good. So I wouldn't suggest to throw out common sense and perspective out the window just yet. On the 10th, we're going to have the moon conjunct Chiron and trining the sun. This is a time of healing. This is a time of bridging the gaps. This is a time of mending wounds. This is a time of gaining great understandings and wisdom. And it's a good time. It's a time of reconciliation. It's a time of letting things settle down after a lot of dust has been up in the air. On the evening time in Europe and noon onwards in the state, is going to be a square to Venus. And then later on, a sextile to Mars. Energy is coming in. A lot of energy is coming in. We could be, become very active, but the square to Venus says that this is going to be with, um, that this is go can affect adversely our relationships and can stand in contradictions to other people's needs in our life. So we need to be extra sensitive at this time with relationships. On the 11th, the moon is already in Aries, again, an energetic surge that is coming in this weekend, making us all more active than usual. Sextile Mars in the morning, very active uh, Friday morning in Europe, and, or very late night, uh, Thursday night in the States. And then, later on, in the morning time, in America, noonwards, morning time, noonwards and afternoon, and that's evening time and night time in Europe. There's going to be a square to Pluto and an opposition to Jupiter. We could want it all and want it now, become overly dramatic, lose our perspective, and go head on into something that can create a clash, and we'll need to watch that, of course. On the 12th, the moon is conjunct Uranus. This is a great um, combination because it can connect all these digestive emotional processes that we've been going through with our higher cognitive mind and allow us to gain understandings, to uh, understand things outside the box, to bring innovative ideas in, to hear and be exposed to concepts and activities or, or, or talks or people that are unusual and new to us and so bring with them some, something that has a contribution, a unique contribution to our emotional resilience, our emotional maturity and our emotional understanding. So I suggest that you go out of the beaten path on Saturday the 12th. And on that day, Venus, the planet of love, satisfaction and money, is walking into Capricorn, reserved, mature, reliable Capricorn. So everything concerning love, everything concerning money and satisfaction is going to become much more um, involving a cognitive, logical process of weighing the pros and cons, much more reserved and mature and um, responsible. And it's about understanding how our actions affect other people. It's about understanding that even though we would want to get more satisfaction or more love or a better relationship or more money, we have to face life as it is. Not as we are afraid it is, not as we hoped it might be, 
but as it really is. And once we acknowledge the rules imposed by life, by this universe upon us, whether we like it or not, once we acknowledge that, we are better able to deal with it and build upon it. We are better able to understand that we need to build our little house within the pillars that were erected in this world and in which we don't have any effect on. We cannot change the way this world is. We can do our own little, or build our own little piece of heaven within it. So this is about Venus. The not so positive part about that is that we could become much more reserved and emotionally distant and we can become much shyer within our relationships or experience within our relationships dominance issues, whether it be it's people trying to dominate us or us becoming more dominant regarding other people in our lives. <clears throat> Mercury, the planet of thought, words and communication will be entering on that same day to adventurous Sagittarius, optimistic Sagittarius. So we have that contradiction between the reserved responsible type and the optimistic happy-go-lucky type. So everything we aspire to, everything we navigate our life through and the way we communicate, the way we talk, the way we debate is going to become much more opinionated, much more philosophical. It's about finding the truth and it's about adhering to our own truth and bridging that gap between how we live and what we believe. It's about bringing the two together. It's about understanding that if we want to talk the talk, we need to walk the walk. And debates can become much more heated during Mercury in Sagittarius, making us think that we are the only one with the light of truth and everybody else is in complete darkness. Well, please remember that truth is comparative. And your own truth is somebody else's falsehood. So, we're going to be um, more optimistic and that's positive. We're going to be more adventurous and that's great. And we might even expand our horizons and our philosophy and our understanding and wisdom about the truth of what life is. But we have to watch it regarding becoming bigots, opinionated in an unprecedented way, really, and have prejudice regarding things that we do not really understand. Moon, void of course, on the 12th of this month, between 12.45 Central European time to 2 and a half a.m. on the 13th Central European time. That's 7.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 10 and a half p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 12th. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for your support. And I want to thank you for being spiritual people and going on that road. It's important for each and every one of us. We're all in the same boat together. And of course, I'm here to answer any questions you might have regarding evolutionary astrology. This is Boaz Feiler. Goodbye.